Good evening, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. So, in today's video, we're going to talk about something a tad bit different. Uh, so, th in this situation, uh, we aren't really dealing with too much severe weather, but I do notice somewhat of a flood threat existing, especially around New Year. So, we're going to touch up on that. I think uh, tomorrow we'll kind of just go over the uh, New Year's Eve forecast, or maybe probably on uh, Saturday morning we'll touch up on that. But it would be wrong if I didn't talk about it. So we're going to go ahead and go over that really quick. Also talking about the uh, marginal severe threats that we have for today and tomorrow. Not a whole lot to get into. Tonight's severe threat isn't very impressive. In fact, there's not a whole lot going on there. If anything, it's more flooding issues. Flood watch in effect. Maybe a flash flood warning over here over towards the... Uh, Texas coast and a little bit further inland but other than that no severe watches or warnings doesn't look like there's going to be any watches issued especially as of this latest uh, meso discussion here so nothing to really worry about there but, but just out of fairness of course let's go ahead and take a look at what where our heart our uh, marginal risk is highlighted and what the threats are it's mainly going to be centered around areas like Houston, Tyler, Texas, Pasadena. And then as we uh, move a little further east, we can include Little Rock, Shreveport, uh, Alexandria, Pasadena. Or not Pasadena, but um, Lafayette, excuse me. Main threat with this would be a uh, isolated damaging wind gust, a uh, possibly a brief spin-up tornado, and maybe even a uh, small chance of hail. But uh, not a very impressive setup. No, nothing amazing, dynamically speaking. And it's pretty much the same with tomorrow. The threat kind of gets smaller and shifts towards the uh, Gulf Coast states. Pretty much an ide identical situation. Tornado and wind threat seem to be the uh, main story. Albeit, you may just see a brief spin up. And you may just see a brief period where a storm pulses a quick damaging wind gust. Hail threat isn't even existent with this one. Or it's less than 5%. But that's pretty much the deal there on uh, New Year's Day. I don't really expect too much going on there. Thunderstorms right for the southeast, but beyond that, not much going on. And of course, we know what's going on with the second. We'll of course be talking about that in greater detail tomorrow afternoon. Oops. So we have a couple of areas where we have a day run a day one uh, excessive rainfall threat. One is towards the west coast as the as multiple storm systems are going to be moving in over the course of the next week. So this area is already a little bit compromised when it comes to uh, groundwater saturation. So there's always that chance that that groundwater cannot take in too much more and the flood threat in turn will increase. Same can really be said for this area here. It stretches into the uh, Mississippi River base, Basin back towards Texas and then also towards the uh, also towards the Arklatex. So basically anywhere from uh, central Louisiana all the way up towards uh, southern Illinois, we'll have to watch you guys for a flood threat tonight. And then as we move this forward tomorrow, threat shifts a little bit further to the east. Now we're looking at New Orleans in there as well as Montgomery. And uh, areas in between, of course, the Gulf Coast states like Biloxi and Gulf Port. We're watching you as well. This is where our uh, greatest threat would be anticipated. And then, of course, just to the south of uh, St. Louis towards the Mississippi River. We'll have to watch this area for potential flooding. Memphis, you're just outside this slight risk. And then, uh, of course, we're continuing to watch southern Illinois for the threat of flooding. And the, uh, I guess you would call this a panhandle here. A panhandle of um, Missouri? I don't I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it would make sense. Maybe it'd just be better to call it a dog leg. I don't know. But this part of Missouri right here, the uh, south and eastern part of Missouri, we'll be watching that as well. We'll roll this to day three, and then uh, we start to lose a little bit of confidence on that. Showers and thunderstorms aren't going to be as uh, widespread in coverage here, so... I think a marginal risk probably is the best move. And this stretches through pretty much all, almost all of Georgia here. 
through almost all the big cities. Atlanta, you're in there. Uh, Columbus, Warner Robins, Macon, etc. All of you guys are pretty much in it. And then uh, we can also look towards the mountains, towards the Blue Ridge Trail, maybe on the uh, southern tip of that. We might have to look out for some, uh, a uh, slight chance of flooding. And then maybe towards uh, the uh, northwestern borders of South Carolina, we'll have to watch you too. But really, there's not a whole lot going there. And this is heading towards the evening and towards uh, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. Oh, and then we see our uh, flood threat back over towards the west, mainly towards the west coast, where another storm will be entering, which will eventually be our severe weather producer over in this region. There we go. And it looks like my uh, mouse, my wireless mouse, is dying here. But that's what we have going on there, and then. On day uh, four, that's when things start to quiet down for just a moment. Day four, which is uh, New Year's Day, is expected to be relatively quiet. But once we get to day five, this area is going to seem very familiar to you. <laughs> well, there we have it. So Ozarks, Arklatex, and then just towards the uh, Mississippi River Basin, we'll have to watch that for the threat of severe weather. Nothing out of the, nothing unexpected there, but considering we're five days out, this is not there's not really a whole lot I can read into here. Central Louisiana, pretty much the uh, eastern half of Arkansas, heading into uh, maybe Memphis, Jackson, Tennessee, and the northwest corner of Mississippi itself. We'll have to watch that for what's already a, a slight risk for excessive rainfall and maybe even flooding. When we look at the uh, storm systems that lie ahead on the uh, vorticity model, like I said, these aren't trail these aren't uh, trailblazing storms. There's not a whole lot going on with them. Like you see these little small tilts right here, these little small uh, troughs that dig in through the jet stream. It's just enough to uh, draw in a little bit of Gulf moisture as it goes along its way and can cause some increased rainfall rates. But beyond that. It's not very impressive. Even then, the rainfall rates themselves, those aren't necessarily trailblazers. But if these storms go over the same areas over and over again, that's when it starts to pose a problem. Then we'll run this forward, and this will be the system that's coming in on the second, but this is the end of the model run. We'll have to watch this, but this looks a lot more robust than what we were seeing earlier with these. Like this right here, not very impressive at all in comparison to this right here, what we're seeing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our precip may look like, and then we'll uh, do some rainfall comparisons here, and we'll go from that point. Oops. All right, so here's our first system right here, which is going to be causing maybe an isolated chance of uh, severe weather, maybe an isolated storm or two go severe tonight but in all likelihood we're just going to be mainly de mainly dealing with thunder lightning and maybe some heavy rain and we'll roll this forward rain traveling over the same areas especially over this region i do think that there is a slightly more increased chance of flooding over towards this corridor here and then of course tomorrow this is when the gulf of mexico starts to open up a bit more and as a result the uh, rain threat shifts a little bit more towards the uh, south and east and then this will be over towards uh, the start of New Year's Eve over towards the southeast early in the day I think we'll have some showers and thunderstorms in play but as we uh, draw towards the uh, late evening hours this is about I would say seven o'clock eastern time a lot of these storms are going to be starting to move out and then we'll go a couple more runs this is going to be right about the time where uh, the uh, the item in some of your big cities will be dropping. For us, it's the peach. For, uh, of course, in New York, it's the Big Apple, etc. For a lot of areas around the uh, Mid-Atlantic and the South, a lot of it's going to be uh, cleared out by this point. So, thankfully, it doesn't look like uh, New Year's Eve isn't going to be hampered. There may be a couple points where it may get a little damp, but it won't be ruined. And then, of course... Once we get into New Year's Day, unless you're over towards the Rockies, it actually looks pretty quiet. But 
that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, rainfall totals that could lie ahead here. We're going to jump over to the euro first, actually. And our main swath of rain here is going to be over towards this region. I kind of agree with that, considering that's what the euro was kind of playing, playing around with here on the uh, precip rate model. There also could be a pocket over here where we could see some uh, above average rainfall that's uh, not being depicted here by any of the models. May have to watch this little spot right here towards the uh, Gulf Coast as well for some uh, locally higher rainfall rates as well. But over, other than that, most areas are going to be seeing a widespread uh, quarter inch, maybe half inch rainfall. Some areas could get up to about three quarter inches. It's not until we get into these more concentrated areas where we start to get above an inch or more rainfall. But once you get there, you could see some pretty big numbers. Some places could see up to about maybe two inches, all the way up to maybe even four, four and a half inches. So we'll have to see what that does. I don't think the numbers are really going to get that high to where we're looking at four inch rainfall rates over the next few days. So we'll run this over to the Canadian now, and we're looking at a pretty similar picture to the Euro. And the GFS will paint a little bit different of a picture as well, if I can get it to stay on there. GFS has a slightly larger swath over towards the Gulf Coast states, and a larger swath in general over towards the uh, Mississippi River Valley and into the Ohio Valley even now. Then there's an extra little swath right here towards Alabama and Mississippi. We'll have to watch that, of course. And then here's our blend of models. This is where the most likely outcome is to occur here. Some of these models tend to be a little bit more passive, others more aggressive. And as a result, the blend of models usually is a good uh, middle ground to look at. So when we look at the, uh, blend of mo the uh, National Weather Service's blend of models, that little swath of rain that exists between the uh, Arklatex, that remains, but once we get a little further north, totals aren't quite as aggressive as some of the other model runs. We're looking mainly towards about inch and a half towards these regions. That's where these, but these storms are going to be kind of training over each other one, over, one after the other. So we'll have to see how this ends up changing by the next model run. And then over towards the Gulf Coast, a little bit more passive on that. And then as far as the southeast concern, is concerned as a whole, it's mainly, the general thinking is mainly going to be more towards like a half inch of rain over the uh, New Year weekend holiday. And then a couple of isolated pockets where we could get closer towards an inch towards the uh, mountains in particular. But other than that, not really, not really too much issues going on here. Just uh, be prepared early in the day if you're planning to hang around town. Uh, in more of the big cities regarding the uh, rain threat. I don't expect anything uh, magnanimous with a severe threat, but of course we'll always be watching that given the fact that it's a holiday. But other than that, not really much going on. The further east we go on this, uh, the less you have to worry about the rainfall threat. You may see half an inch of rain over the next three days, but beyond that, nothing to worry about. But that's the end of this video here. If you guys enjoyed this one, uh, definitely, of course, drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've also noticed that uh, we're pushing uh, really close to 200 subs. Didn't think we would get this close. So I'm like, you know what? You guys might as well try to take it on the way, all the way if you can. I mean, uh, either way, I appreciate it whether we make it there or not. I'm just happy that uh, you guys seem to like the channel. And... Uh, I got some really cool stuff planned for 2023. We're really going to make some uh, big expansions on this. Let's try to uh, improve the channel a little bit more. But anyways, uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Um, I'll see you guys probably with a video in the morning. And of course, we'll be talking about the severe weather threat tomorrow. But until those videos, this has been Tire Metal Weatherman. You guys have a good night. Take care.